Welcome back with another episode of the Bad Man Review. Today we will look at a classic cartridge, the 3006 Springfield. Many others say that this old cartridge is still the best for hunting big game, but how does it fare compared to other modern cartridges? The 3006 is a caliber from a bygone era, where horses were still commonplace. It was hatched as a military cartridge back in 1906, making it a century old. For perspective, that would be two years before the Ford Model T was commercially available, 14 years before commercial radio, and 48 years before Elvis Presley's first hit record. With a cartridge this old, you would think that it would pale in comparison to some more modern calibers such as the 300 Ruger Compact Magnum, the 308 Winchester, or even the tiny 6.5 Creedmoor. But before we start comparing all these calibers, here's a short history lesson. It was after the Spanish-American War in 1898 that the U.S. military realized that they were in dire need of an upgrade. Many American soldiers, including Teddy Roosevelt and his Rough Riders, felt the bite from the 757mm Spanish Mausers in Cuba. The U.S. military wanted to have a rifle and cartridge that had the same power. The result? The Model 1903 Springfield Bolt Action Rifle and 3003 cartridge were born. The 1903 can throw 220 grain round nose bullets at 2300 feet per second, but the US military wanted something even more powerful. So they continued to refine their weapon by shortening the case length and switching to the 150 grain spire point bullet capable of going 2700 feet per second. This cartridge is the 3006 we see today. Fun fact, the US government had to pay royalties to Mauser in Germany because the 1903 rifle and 3006 cartridge were very similar to the Mauser and its 357 mm cartridge. So how effective was this new caliber? History from the First and Second World War told us that they held up pretty good. But for the purpose of this video, we won't be looking at war applications. In hunting scenarios, the performance was pretty impressive. After the end of his presidency in 1909, Teddy Roosevelt himself took the sport variant of the Springfield 3006 out on his African safari. The ex-president was a poor shot, but the 3006 did the job nonetheless. In fact, the 3006 was so effective that his friend and steward Edward White started using the cartridge in 1911. Ernest Hemingway himself used the 3006 on his 1933 safari and managed to down a large line, as well as scoring a one-shot kill on a running rhino at 300 yards. Around the mid-20th century, the 3006 became known as the standard light caliber meaning that the performance of other calibers was compared to that of the 3006 to test their viability. The cartridge was used widely, from dispatching rodents to downing rhinos. It has seen action from the Arctic all the way to the tropical jungles. The 3006 was the reigning king, even when there was competitors from the likes of the 270 Winchester, the 300 H&H, &H, and the 300 Weatherby Magnum. However, all things must come to an end. The popularity of the 3006 Winchester began to fade, when the 7mm Remington Magnum and the 300 Winchester Magnum were introduced in 1962 and 1963, respectfully. That's enough history lesson. The 3006 today is no longer the century old cartridge from a distant past. Modern technology brings about new powder and bullets that amplifies the effectiveness of the 3006. Nowadays, most ammunition can push a 150 grain bullet at 3,000 feet per second or 180 grain at 2,800 feet per second. Whether the 3006 is an ideal cartridge depends on what you want. Do you value ammo variant more? Do you care much about ammo cost or availability? What about the recoil, downrange energy, drop, deflection, wind, and length of your rifle's action? I'll simplify things for you and give you my take on the 3006 Springfield's performance based on each of these categories. Here, the 3006 is still the best cartridge since it comes with about 100 different combinations of bullets from a wide variety of brands in the market. It is safe to say that every ammo manufacturer loads the 306. The lightest 306 cartridge you can find right now is the 55 grain accelerated pointed soft point from Remington, rated at 4,080 feet per second. The heaviest is the Federal's 220 grain Sierra Pro Hunter SP round nose. Even hand loader rounds can easily beat the old 06 with everything such as the 100 grain plinking pills to the 225 grain match bullets and the velocity can go as high as 3,500 feet per second. Any gun shop would have 3006 in stock unless the owner has no idea how to run a gun shop. And there's nothing to worry about cost either. You can find 3006 rounds for sale for as cheap as 50 cents each. A box of 20 costs a measly 10 bucks. To give you perspective, it is considered that a decent hunting load costs at least $15. 
Premium rounds may cost you upwards of $60. It is the same story here. Almost every rifle maker uses the 3006, except for the AR-15 and AR-10 for obvious reasons. The first commercial rifle to chamber the 3006 is the Level Action M1895 Winchester. Since then, many rifles have followed suit. Nowadays, virtually every new rifle model is offered in 3006, regardless of price point. From cheap $300 rifles to premium cutting-edge firearms that cost $20,000 a pop. The first Springfield rifle that chambers a 3006 weighted at 8.6 pounds unloaded. It produced recoil energy at 17.81 foot-pounds at a recoil velocity of 11.54 feet per second, which is manageable for your average soldier for daily use with extended action. Most modern rifles that chamber 3006 weigh about 7 to 8 pounds, and you can even find some that are only 5 pounds. An average 7-pound gun shooting a 150-grain bullet produces recoil energy of 25 foot-pounds at 15 feet per second. The original 3006 with its 150 grain spire point bullet at 2700 feet per second velocity can reach as far as 4.75 miles, but the effective range is 1000 yards. With the flip up rear leaf sight, the range is 2850 yards. Any man sized target at a range of 500 yards is considered point blank. As for the accuracy, many champions in shooting competitions use a 3006 regardless of range. Most modern rifles, if carefully tuned, can achieve true half MOA performance or even one quarter minute precision. Rifle or cartridge accuracy relies more on a balanced and concentrated rifle and bullet than the shape of the cartridge itself. For many hunters and shooters, external ballistics is the true measurement of a cartridge's worth. The entire reason for rifle, scope, brass, powder, and primer is for the flight of the bullet itself. There are three things to consider muzzle velocity, ballistic coefficients, and mass. A bullet with high muzzle velocity, ballistic coefficient, and mass achieves a relatively flat trajectory, retains more energy regardless of ranges, and is less likely to be deflected in the wind. However, that does not mean that a lighter caliber is worse than a heavier one. Every combination of cartridge and bullet is a careful balancing act. If you increase muzzle velocity and mass, you need more powder. This increases recoil energy as well as production costs. So how does the old 3006 fare against other general purpose mid-size hunting cartridges today? Take a look at the table below. Keep in mind that in a test, each cartridge is zeroed in for its maximum point blank range on an 8 inch target. In other words, the bullet impact is zeroed in as high as needed at 100 yards to ensure that bullet strike is at most 4 inches higher than the aiming point of peak trajectory. In addition, the distance where the bullets drop 4 inches below the point of aim is the maximum point blank range for that cartridge. The bullet weights used for each cartridge are appropriate for hunting deer while ensuring that the ballistic coefficient is as high as possible. Finally, keep in mind that ballistic performance varies depending on the ballistic coefficient and mass of the bullet itself. If you want heavier bullets, you would need to sacrifice muzzle velocity. Finally, let's talk about trajectory. For this, check out the table on the screen right now. Keep in mind that muzzle velocities depend on the rifles and using bullets with higher ballistic coefficient will change the downrange performance drastically. In this test, commonly used hunting ammo was put to the test. As you can see, Bullets with higher ballistic coefficient have better ballistics since they minimize drag, allowing them to retain more energy. Other popular alternatives to the 3006. Throughout this video, I've mentioned other cartridges such as the 308 Winchester and the 65 Creedmoor. These are the more modern cartridges that are widely used today. How do they compare to the 3006? 308 Winchester is a civilian variant of the 762 NATO cartridge. This is the ideal rounds for the law enforcement agents and snipers. Though popular, one can say that this is basically a shorter 306. It has the same head, rim, and body diameters. The only difference is the length, which is only half an inch. The difference is minuscule, except in the places where it counts. With half an inch shorter round, you might have very slightly shorter cycle time and about 4 ounces of weight saved. A lot of people say that the 3008 Winchester has better ballistic coefficient, and they are right because it uses less powder. However, you can sacrifice velocity at about 100 to 200 feet per second. The deer won't feel the difference, but you'll feel the pain when your shot lands short or drift off target. That said, the 308 Winchester is fine since it is suitable for most large game. However, it cannot outperform the 3006. The only area where the 308 Winchester does better is the barrel life at 8,000 rounds compared to the 5,000 of the 3006. But this doesn't matter much since barrels are all like tires. You just change it out when it's worn out. The 270 Winchester is also a 306, where the only difference is that the 270 houses a 277 bullet. 
So, you have a smaller bullet, which translates to better ballistic coefficient bullet. It has better drag resistance compared to the chubby 308 bullet as well. For this reason, the 270 Winchester is known for its flat trajectory, especially if a 120 grain projectile is used. The downside is that the 270 Winchester rounds with bullets heavier than 150 grains are hard to find. Moreover, it carries less energy, meaning it does not hit as hard nor penetrate as deep as the 3006. So, the 3006 wins again. Both of these cartridges use 284 inch bullets. Similar to the 270 Winchester, they have higher ballistic coefficients, even though they have the same weight form bullets as the 308. Still, these are very similar to the 3006 with certain compromises I just put in under the 3006. The 7mm 08 is the 308 Winchester neck down. The 280 Remington is just the 3006 neck down. When you consider only the ballistic performance, the 280 Remington easily wins using 150 to 175 grain bullets. But when it comes to the terminal impact on a target, the 3006 loaded with 190 to 220 grain bullets wins again. A lot of people consider the 7mm 08 to be the best cartridge for hunting whitetails. However, it suffers the same problem as the 308 Winchester because it uses less powder. Using 140 to 150 grain bullets, its performance is similar to the 3006. If you go any heavier, the 3006 is better. 300 Winchester Magnum. This one is a clear winner. It's not just the 300 Winchester Magnum, literally. Every 300 Magnum outperforms the 3006 because it uses more powder. In this case, the 30 Winchester Magnum has 20 grains more powder. The 300 Remington Ultra Magnum, 30 grains. The 30 387, 40 grains. The drawback is that you have to deal with reduced barrel life, stronger recoil, expensive ammo, and heavier, bulkier rifles. So before you commit to the 300 Magnums, ask yourself whether you want to deal with all of these problems. If you don't shoot your game farther than 400 yards, then it's not worth the trouble. At that range, the 306 does only 101 foot-pounds less impact, which, still being affordable and accurate. Finally, let's look at the 6.5 Creedmoor. Now, you might think that the tiny 6.5 Creedmoor is not even deserved to be in this comparison since it spits a 143 grain bullet at a measly 2,700 feet per second. However, a lot of hunters use this to take down the same game commonly hunted with the 306. If you look at the trajectory table again, the 6.5 Creedmoor can keep up with more powerful rounds and even outperform some others at longer ranges. This is possible because of its high ballistic coefficient. Its ballistic performance is better because it resists drag better and can deliver more energy into the target. Again, there's an upper weight limit for this caliber, making this caliber not as versatile as the 3006. Think of it this way. When faced with a charging bore, what bullet would you rather have? A 143 grain or a 220 grain? In short, the 3006 is still the king of hunting cartridges. To be clear, all of the above cartridges are not bad. It's just that the 3006 is the jack of all trades with good performance across the board. Keep in mind that it was powerful to stop lions and rhinos 100 years ago. Nowadays, with modern ammo and powder, it has even more velocity and stomping power. It is certainly powerful enough to put a moose down. There you have it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again next time.